Hello folks, my name is Captain Steve with Megalodon Charters. We're located in Venice, Florida, right here on the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we specialize in the shark tooth dive and we take divers out on a really nice dive and look for different fossils including shark's teeth. We're lucky that we are surrounded by different deposits that uh, crop out at about 30 feet of water right out here off the coast of Venice. We find some things here that I can show you. Uh, the most common thing we're looking for is the Megalodon shark teeth. This is a meg here, about four inches long approximately. These guys fortunately are extinct. Uh, presumably one inch of tooth equals about 10 feet of shark. So this guy here is probably a, a 35 or 40 foot shark right there. Um, about 80% of the teeth we find out here in the Gulf are broken. So you'll find a lot of fragments like this one here. And the reason that they're broken is that they break in predation. When these guys would come along and want to eat a whale or a manatee or something, they would come down and boom, their teeth would shatter when they hit the bones. So because of that, we find a lot of splits like this. And this is what we call a heartbreaker because you'll be swimming along and you'll see this thing sticking out of the, uh, out of the dirt or the, the mud and you'll think, oh yeah, I got a big one here. And then you'll pull it out and it's a half a tooth. Still a really cool fossil, um, but it's not a whole meg. That's the prize there that we find, but we also find all sorts of other interesting things. For example, this whale vertebrae here, this is from a archaic whale. Um, and then you can see that it's very identifiable as a vertebrae. We also find lots of pieces of mammoth. This is a tooth, a piece of a mammoth tooth. And this is a very uh, interesting piece here. Like this is a uh, example of a jawbone from a whale. Kind of interesting. To some people it may seem like a rock, but it's actually a jaw. The teeth would fit right in there. Uh, another neat thing here, a piece of tusk, likely from a, uh, from a mammoth or a uh, mastodon. And this is just kind of a... Uh, a beat up piece here but this is ivory and these are this is another example of fossils that we find uh, these are some cast from a, a clam this one is we also find cast from scallops uh, what happens is this thing fills up with sand and the sand fossilizes and then the shell breaks away um, these are all from the pliocene time period where most of the fossils that we find out here are from that period. The stuff that we're finding goes back all the way into the Miocene era. Um, we find things from the Pleistocene, Pliocene, and the Miocene era. And that spreads from about 50,000 years ago all the way to about 10 million years ago. Um, Florida went through lots of changes during that time. It was underwater, it was exposed, it was underwater many different times. Um, and back, way back, uh, we find some stuff from the Miocene times, um, for example this, this is a walrus tusk, very rare, we don't find a lot of these, um, but this came up right here in Venice and uh, is a very unusual find and, and pretty unique, so that's fun. Um, and then moving forward in time to the uh, Pleistocene era when Florida was much bigger than we know it today probably another hundred miles out in the Gulf. There was pasture lands, grassy lands, rivers running through, and lots of big land mammals walking around here. Uh, for example, this, uh, ma this mammoth tooth here. We find a lot of these things out there. These are, this is a piece of a tooth from a mammoth. It's called the Columbian mammoth. Not the woolly mammoth, but is related to them. The, we find lots of horse teeth out there from the Pleistocene along with the, the, when the mammoth were running around here. There was an animal called a giant ground sloth that walked around here, a big strange creature about eight feet tall that used to eat branches and, and other things. Um, we found some fossils from them as well. Um, and that's the really neat thing about this dive is you just don't know what you'll find. Anything is possible. Um, we're always finding unique things. And, it's a, it's a really great experience. It's a very easy dive for people. Beginner divers love it uh, because it's relatively shallow. It's a fun dive. They get to be very interactive with it. They get to touch things. And you have the chance of coming back with something that's uh, far more valuable than your dive that you paid for and a treasure that you can you know pass on.
attention for just a minute here. We will be rolling here just shortly. Um, my name is Steve. I'm the captain. I'm also a dive master. Pete is your dive master on the boat today. He is a certified uh, paddy dive master, a first responder, a rescue diver as well. Um, he is the person here that will help you in the water and uh, with anything else for that matter. If you guys need anything, speak up because we're here to help you make sure you have a good trip and a safe time. Uh, you guys are in good hands. You're on a good boat. and um, Good day. Good day. But it's a relatively simple dive. You're going to come to the back of the boat with your uh, with Aaron, your BC. You're going to do a giant stride off the back. This transom comes out, and we're going to give you your flag in the water. Uh, remember, give me the high sign when you get in. We're only going to be in about 30 feet of water, so you can ascend and descend multiple times without without it being problematic. Your biggest concern is going to be over expansion. It's that first atmosphere, so the air expands twice in volume on your way up. That being said, you're all responsible for yourselves, but uh, I recommend that you kick to the surface when you do make your ascent, since we are only in 30 feet of water. Uh, if you put a spit of air in there when you're on the bottom to make your ascent, that's going to start expanding very quickly. Just you know, as in a continuum as you rise up. So if you're not ready to dump that quickly, you can start a runaway ascent. And uh, you want to avoid that at all costs. All right. So I uh, recommend you keep your eye on your gauge. Kick slowly under your own power. Do a safety stop if you'd like. When you get back to the surface, boom, hit your BCD. And you are, uh, you know, have your own personal life vest. I know we've got pretty much all experienced divers on board. A couple reminders equalize early and often. Descend slowly, descend even slower, and we're going to give you a compass heading. We're not turning this into a navigational dive. It's just to keep you going in the general direction towards the front of the boat so that when you come up, the wind and the surface current will bring you back to the boat. You won't have to swim against the current. If you do come up in the back of the boat, no need to panic. Happens almost every day. It's uh, not the end of the world. Uh, when you do surface, give me the high sign. If you're far enough away from the boat and you see me do uh, without this, if you see me put my hands over my head, it's just so you can see me. I'm asking you to give me the okay signal. All right. So uh, I'll either feed the uh, rescue float out to you, or I'll swim it out to you, depending on how far you come up. doing a reciprocal heading so that you end up back under the boat, none of that. You can just end up somewhere out in front of the boat, you'll be fine. And you'll be fine if you come up in back of the boat. All right, that being said, any questions on the dive brief? No. Boop. All right, thank you. So, I mean, in terms of things that you find down here, uh, this is really... This is really what typically people are coming for, but they won't necessarily be lying on the bottom. Sometimes they are, just like this, with your name on it. Very unusual. That's like that's like shopping at the Goodwill or the Salvation Army. You gotta go early and often, you know, and bang, and you find the good stuff. So, uh, but they may be under the silty surface, the sand bottom, you know, gravelly bottoms, about an inch and a half, two inches thick. It has a, you know, this might be sticking out with a few barnacles on it, and you'll think it's just a rock and pass right over it. So where you've, where you've been taught in diving typically to stay off the reef, don't touch the reef, uh, we don't have a reef here. So uh, you're going to end, don't touch anything, we really want you to touch everything, really, you know, okay. except the sea life, sea urchins, you know, obviously the um, starfish, they move very slowly so they look dead, invariably somebody brings them up thinking they're dead, 99.9% of the time they're alive. Shell you might find down there. Again, most of the time, I don't want to discourage you from bringing them up, but you're you're usually bringing up someone's house. It's uh, uh, even when you look in there and you can't see, they, they wrap up really uh, tightly up inside this internal spiral of the uh, of the shell. So I I recommend you leave the shells down there, even if you find one you really like.
I think that's Come on, Pete, give us yeah, a good that's news, man. That's where we're going to have lunch. Oh, okay. Sharkies. Right on both sides of it is the beach.
to the dock. It's a little greasy, so if we bump a bit, uh, keep your hands inside. Uh, uh, avoid trying to fend off. Just let us do it. Actually, don't try to help us fend off. Just let us bump and knock about and, uh, and, uh, and get it done. All right? And thanks again. Anyway, uh, there's fresh water here in the uh, tank here. If you want to rinse your gear off, feel free. Um, we'll help you unload your stuff. Don't forget to take care of uh, your dive master, Pete. He did a good job for you guys today. Make sure everybody's safe and sound. And again, thanks. So this is just some of the fossils that we found over the last seven days in Venice, Florida. Scuba diving, treasure hunting in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of the more unique things that we found is this is most likely the tooth of a sperm whale. This is a deer antler. That's very cool. This is probably also the tooth of a sperm whale. Thought it might have been ivory, but again, you could tell by the root and the way that it's broken off, so that's pretty cool. I mean, this is another megalodon, tooth megalodon, 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 megalodon. So you see megalodon, these are all megalodon, big ones, little ones, all different sizes. The stuff is down there, all you gotta do is go have the patience to look for it. But these are castings from clamshells, maybe scallop shell. We got a whole bunch of these, but the little ones are really neat because they're hard to find. These are the tympanic bones, ear bones of whales. So that's pretty cool. You can find these if you know what you're looking for. We've probably got about half a dozen of these. More um, whale tooth. Pretty cool. And we just got lots. Oh, horse tooth. This, I don't know what this is, but I found a couple of these. It's hollow. I don't know what that is. Another clam or scallop shell. Nice megalodon. We've made out really well. Look at that. That would be some megalodon. Look at the difference. The size that that thing would have been. What's that? I'm playing with all my stuff. Ooh, what's that? Look at that one. Nice, right? So, I highly recommend Megalodon Charters for a good time beneath the sea. Treasure hunting in the Gulf of Mexico. Look at that. It's going to be something under there. Something beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely, obviously, a bone of some kind of creature that used to swim in the sea or walk around on the land. I don't know, but we can get these ID'd from a paleontologist or something back home. Mm -hmm. Look at that one. Right? Imagine that baby chomping down on you. We can make a whole one. All right. Hello, I'm Christopher Gervais. I'm the president of the International Exploration Society, and I'm also a paleontologist. And I have a number of fossils here today before you on this table that were collected by Debbie Klugers on a recent dive trip off the waters of Sarasota in the Gulf of Mexico, combining two of her passions, scuba diving and fossil collecting. And what we have here is representation of both animals from both the land and the sea 
during the Pleistocene period. What we have right here are sperm whale teeth. The sperm whale is the largest tooth whale that exists today and quite possibly then during the Pleistocene. And this is a sperm whale inner ear bone. And these here are also sperm whale teeth. This as well as this right here. And then here we have cetacean teeth, and I say cetacean because they're possibly a porpoise or a dolphin. And when fossils get this eroded, it's difficult sometimes to tell. But again, they have the distinctive shape and markings of a small tooth whale. And these are two fairly well-preserved carcarodon, megalodon teeth. But here we have over a four-inch tooth, and you can see that the roots are broken. But this is from an animal that's clearly well over 30 feet long. This tooth here has just different color on it because of the minerals in the sand and the clay of where it had been deposited. The extinct species of Carcharodon, Carcharodon megalodon, it is believed grew over 50 feet, perhaps 60 feet. And there are some scientists out there saying it quantifies it even larger. The largest Carcharodon megalodon tooth that was ever found was over seven inches in length. Uh, and imagine a shark with a thousand of these razor sharp seven inch teeth. Uh, that tooth is currently at the Smithsonian Institution and there are some believe that, that that particular shark there may have well ever been a 60 foot animal. On a lot of occasions you'll find very large vertebrae that are whale vertebrae. And this has the distinctive shape of a vertebrae. And these are horse teeth right here. This one right here, although I cannot confirm it because it's badly broken, but I believe this may be a part of a tooth of a giant ground sloth. What we also have here is a piece of turtle shell or tortoise. What we have here is uh, something very common, uh, rib bone, and uh, it could be from a manatee or a dugon, which were both found during the Pleistocene era. These here, I believe, are pieces of proboscidea teeth. Now, proboscidea would include both mammoth or mastodon. And then here what we have are not the actual shell itself, but castings. You would have fossil uh, created by sand, sediment, clay, which would go inside a scallop shell or uh, any kind of conch shell. Eventually the shell itself would erode and inside you would have a casting. A lot of what we see in here is clearly fossil, but fossil of what? Uh, I'm not necessarily the greatest expert to tell you that, but uh, some others may. Uh, it's certainly worth collecting, and uh, if you do scuba dive and you have an interest in paleontology, the study of fossils, uh, Florida, particularly southwest Florida, is one of the best places in the world to go hunting for Pleistocene mammal fossil deposits uh, off the waters of Venice and Sarasota, in the rivers of the Peace, Kalusahatchee, and Mayaka. My there are still, I believe, some wonderful fossil locations where uh, you can combine scuba diving and, and fossil collecting.